Hey everybody, it's Alana Owlet, and today I am here with my top five tips for buying a sewing machine. This has been actually probably like the most requested top five tips video. I've gotten so many people asking for me to do this and I'm really sorry it's just like taken forever because I know a lot of you guys have kind of asked for advice on this. But anyway, these are sort of my thoughts on what you want to look for when you get a new sewing machine. I've got a Singer Quantum Stylus Touch, which I got, my husband got for me for Christmas last year, so I've had it about a year and I really love it. But these are more my thoughts because everyone kind of has different needs with their sewing machines and things like that. These are my thoughts on how to pick out the best one for you. So tip number one is the most important part and that is your price range. There's kind of two sides to this. Sewing machines are really expensive, like especially good ones are very, very expensive. But this really, really is a case with sewing machines of you get what you pay for. Like the first sewing machine I had was, I don't even remember what it was, but it basically just disintegrated with the amount of work I was putting it through. It's not saying it was a bad machine, like it could have, you know, if I was just making like an occasional skirt or like a, you know, some curtains or something, it would have been a very good fit for me. But because I was constantly like, gotta make a Jedi robe, gotta make like a Pokemon trainer outfit, gotta, you know, because I was constantly, constantly running it with different fabrics of different weights and always using it it just broke so quickly it basically ended up being kind of a waste of money because it just fell apart so when you buy a sewing machine you need to know up front that if you think you're really really going to get in this hobby and you're going to be doing a lot of sewing all the time and you're going to be using crazy stretch fabrics and leathers and thick materials and stuff you probably do want to buy a more expensive high quality machine because you're going to need it it's just otherwise it's not going to be able to put up with what you're doing to it. If you think you're going to be more casual about cosplay, you know, you're maybe just going to make one or two new costumes a year and they're going to be pretty straightforward and you're not using like crazy exotic materials, then, you know, by in that case, yeah, by all means buy a less expensive machine. That's going to fit your needs a lot better and it will probably work perfectly for you. I'm not saying cheap machines are always going to break. I'm just saying we do a lot of crazy stuff to them in this hobby. So you really need to sit down and figure out how much you are willing to spend and how much you are going to be using it in this hobby before you even get started looking for one. So tip number two is to think about what you need it to do. If you know you're going to be making a lot of fancy embroidery and you need to make a patch that's specifically shaped like this and you're going to be making a lot of appliques and stuff like that, you might want to buy a machine that has an embroidery attachment or an embroidery option where you can create a design and then it will sew out that logo and you'll be able to sew it on. If you want to really, really make your insides of your costume very professional and very finished, you might want to invest in a serger to be able to finish those seams really cleanly and sew it together. I don't really do either of those things very much. So the machine I have, which I am like, again, I'm very impressed with my husband for finding this because I didn't know he was getting it for me and it's perfect. It's got like 900 different like decorative stitch options. That's perfect for me because I'm always putting textures on stuff so I can just put any old stitch on there and it's great. I can like go crazy with it. So that's a very good fit for me. But think about what you're going to be doing with it. If you make a lot of sort of armor and gritty type costumes and you're going to be using a lot of leather, you might want to look into a machine that's just more heavy duty. It can really handle those types of fabrics. If you are like me and you like to add decorative stitching, you might want to look for something that's got a lot of options. So there are a lot of different variations out there. Just sort of sit down and think like, not just the costumes you're making right now, but your general style of costumes and what you like to create, what do you need that machine to be able to do for you? Because chances are there's a machine out there that does it. So now you've got your plan all laid out and it's time for tip number three, which is to find your machine but you don't just dive right in and like go to the store and say, I'll take that one. You wanna put a lot of research into it. Let's say you've said, okay, I need just a, a basic sewing machine. I don't need it to do a lot of stitches. I don't need it to do embroidery. I just need like a higher end basic sewing machine that's gonna last me a long time. Start looking for reviews. Google like a list of recommended sewing machines. See what pops up over and over on those lists. Put together, you know, three or four machines that seem to come up a lot and then go look at the Amazon reviews and look on message boards and look on websites and see what other people say about them. Because especially with something that you're kind of having a long-term investment with, like the sewing machine, you really wanna make sure it's not just like, you know, the people making it being like, oh, it's amazing, the best machine, and then it gets here and it's a piece of junk. 
really look at other people's reviews. Tip number four is thinking about long-term care for your sewing machine because again, you probably just spent a lot of money on this thing, you want it to last. So make sure you have some sort of user manual. If it didn't come with your machine, they're usually online. Look and see if there are YouTube videos. Almost all the major sewing machine brands will have a whole bunch of videos for all their machines of like how to load it, how to do these basic stitches, but how to fix it if there's a jam and stuff like that. Really take advantage of those resources because you want to keep your machine in great shape. You know, don't be afraid to kind of give it a little clean every now and then. I always have like my compressed air and I'm just like popping it open like, all right, time to clean it and just like going nuts on it. So do everything you can just to keep it clean, keep it happy, make sure you're really gonna get your money's worth and be able to use it for a long time. And tip number five is what to do if it does break? What if some sort of catastrophe happens? Make sure if it has a warranty that you have that. Make sure when you're buying it that you kind of check with that particular brand. Look on their website and see if they have a policy where you can return it or you can send it in to be fixed or repaired. If they don't, take a look in your area. A lot of times fabric shops, even if they don't do sewing machine repair at the fabric store, they will have resources for it because everyone who works there likes sewing. So they might say like, yeah, yeah, go to this or you know, in my case, there's a store kind of near here where they will do repairs. So make sure you know those resources as well. So if something does go wrong, you have a way to make sure you're still gonna be able to repair that machine and keep using it, that you're not just gonna have to throw it in the trash. So those are my top five tips for buying a sewing machine. I know it's a big investment and it's kind of intense, but as a cosplayer, you know, it's really, it's worth having, even if it's just a basic one that's just gonna be able to sew a jacket or two for you from time to time. So hopefully they were helpful if you have any other questions or if you want to know about the machine I use or if you want to know if other people have opinions on a machine you're thinking about getting, leave them in the comments, help each other out, and I will be back soon. 